This video is definitely not going to be for everyone, especially if you get offended easy. I'm going to be laying down the honest truth about why pre-meds don't get into medical school, even when you have a really good GPA and MCAT score. So if that's you, then definitely stick around for this video. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I'm a first year DO medical student. And today I'm gonna be shedding some light on why certain medical students have such a difficult time getting into medical school with a very high and very competitive GPA and MCAT score. Now you guys are probably used to me talking about having a low GPA and a low MCAT score and kind of how to bypass that entire situation and get into medical school. But today I want to focus on the people with really good grades, with a really good MCAT score, and just talk about what are some of the things that you guys can change and what are some of the things that are keeping you out of medical school. So in my humble opinion, the first thing that medical schools are gonna look at besides your MCAT and your GPA, let's just assume that you met their GPA minimum and their MCAT minimum and you're still having a difficult time getting in. And so the first thing that I would look at is your personal statement. Your personal statement is a story. So if you're not conveying your story to the admissions committee in a way that makes you explain why you wanna be a doctor, why you're interested in medicine, what you've done to actually prove in that you're interested in medicine, then these are going to be red flags for admissions committees because they already know that you're smart enough. They know you did well on the MCAT. They know you did well in undergrad, but now they want to know, is this person going to be a good doctor? And so when you're writing your personal statement, you need to keep a few questions in mind and make sure you address them within your personal statement. Now, the first thing that I recommend is answering the question, why do I want to become a physician? Because you're gonna become a physician, so you kind of need to tell them why you actually want to become a doctor. The second thing you wanna focus on are what are one to two experiences that I've had that have led me to want to go to medical school. So why do you actually wanna become a doctor? Did you have a specific experience? Did you work in the ER? Did you work in the OR? Did you have a family member that was ill and you took care of them? Admissions committees want to know more about you. They want to know how you came to the conclusion that I want to become a doctor. And the third thing that I want you guys to focus on is what makes you different than the other applicants? Why should the admissions committees choose you over someone else? What makes you different? What experiences have you had that make you different? And then a really big thing is what are you going to actually bring to the medical school that accepts you? What are you gonna contribute to the community? What are you gonna contribute to the medical school? And so I would definitely take a look at your guys' personal statements, make sure that you guys are including answers to all of these questions, but make sure that your personal statement is a story. You don't wanna just go through checking off boxes, answering questions in a very vague way. You wanna make sure that your personal statement is flowing you know, add a meaningful quote, you know, make sure that the introduction ties into your conclusion. And so if you guys need help editing or rewriting your personal statements, you guys can check out my Facebook page down below. It's called Med School Mentor. You guys can get in contact with me. I have a professional writer that helps me edit all of the personal statements that you guys send to me. And I promise you guys, if you guys send me your personal statements, that will not be the thing that keeps you out of medical school. So if anything, it's gonna help you guys actually get into medical school, but it definitely won't be the thing that keeps you guys out because we do a phenomenal job on personal statement editing. So the second thing, and this is a very important thing, and it's actually something that a lot of pre-med students lack in, and, and it kind of blows my mind because if you want to be a doctor, shouldn't you know what a doctor does? And that is clinical experience. A lot of pre-meds don't really have very good clinical experience. 
Um, if you guys are wondering what are good clinical experiences, I made a video, I'll put the link down below, but definitely go check out that video because I talk about very good, high quality pre-med clinical experiences that you guys should be having as a pre-med student. And I think it's important to address the question, does your clinical experience need to be unpaid versus paid? And the answer to that is no. It doesn't matter if you're getting paid to have that clinical experience or if it's volunteering. The one thing I want you guys to keep in mind though is medical schools don't really love double dipping. And so if one of your clinical experiences is not paid and therefore is considered volunteering, you need to make sure you're either putting that in the volunteering category or the clinical experience category. Now, the last thing I wanna mention about clinical experience is it's much more important to have fewer clinical experiences that last a longer period of time rather than having multiple smaller clinical experiences that are only like a month or two in duration. Now guys, I can go on and on about the things that you could improve regarding your application, regarding your secondaries, your interviews, stuff like that, but I'm gonna keep this video fairly short. And so the third and final thing that people with a high GPA and a high MCAT need to improve on is their interviewing skills. Generally, if you have a high MCAT and you have a high GPA, you're most likely gonna get invited for an interview. And so if you get to the interview stage, it means the medical school loves everything they see on paper. Now that doesn't mean that they love you yet, and that's why you need to nail your interview. And so what are some things that you guys can focus on as you guys prepare for your next interviews? So the first thing I want you guys to keep in mind is medical schools want to know what kind of person you are. They wanna know about you, they wanna know how you interact with other people, hence the in-person interview. Um, I know some of you guys are gonna be doing interviews online just due to the current situation, but in the future, it's gonna be back in person again. And so you need to make sure that the way you're communicating with another human being is gonna meet the standards of the medical school that you're applying to. Now, one of the great ways of doing this is to actually do a mock interview. And if you guys want, you can do a mock interview with me. Um, just go down into the description, look up my Facebook page, and you can definitely book a time to do a mock interview with me. Um, I would be happy to do that. I'll give you guys some really good pointers. I'll ask you guys some really commonly asked questions as well as some really weird questions that you might get asked during an interview. But in all honesty, you just need to practice your interviewing skills. The other thing I really want you guys to focus on is to just be yourself. Don't go in there trying to be like this upstanding citizen that got a 4.0, that volunteered 500 hours. They already saw that stuff. They just wanna know what kind of person you are. So make sure to just be yourself. The next thing I really want you guys to focus on in your interview is how are you different from everybody else? Because in all reality, you're competing with the other people that are interviewing there and you need to be able to convey to this admissions person that you're better than the other person. And of course you need to do this without sounding like a complete jerk. And so that's probably gonna take a little bit of practice, which is why I recommend doing a mock interview with myself. Um, we can definitely help you guys out with that. So the take home message about interviewing is to be yourself, but to also differentiate yourself from the other applicants. And guys, I really can't stress this point enough. These people interview hundreds of students. They know when you're lying, so definitely do not lie in your interview. And to just relax, be a normal human being. It's okay to smile, it's okay to laugh, it's okay to tell a joke, which actually reminds me of a video that I made on how my socks actually got me into medical school. So if you guys are interested in knowing how my socks got me into medical school, believe it or not, the link will be down below as well. Definitely go watch that video. You guys are gonna find a ton of value in that video. So guys, if you do these things, you're gonna get into medical school. You guys already have the grades, you have the MCAT score. You just need to do some fine-tuned tweaking on your application, on your interview skills, and you guys are gonna be just fine. If you guys wanna talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, more about your personal situation, I can look over your application, I can look over your personal statements, we can do a mock interview, 
My link is down below. My Facebook page is called Med School Mentor. And so hopefully you guys found this video useful and helpful and valuable. And if you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Give this video a like. And I hope to see you guys in my next video.